Hello, everybody. Happy, 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 happy Sunday. Welcome to the Tierra Goes Green Tackling Tummy Troubles webinar. I just definitely want to do a nice little roll call ahead of time. Make sure everybody can see me, everybody can hear me. Clap your hands, raise your hands if you're able to actually see the live chat on the right hand side of your screen. Make sure you definitely go ahead and take advantage of this time to ask questions. Um, save a lot of your questions to the end, but I actually have two of my team members that will be in that chat room catching just different questions and they'll be able to feed me all of those questions um, or concerns at the end, just in case I forget or <laughs> bypass anything specifically. So I am Tierra Burrell. I am founder of the Tier Goes Green Lifestyle Program. This specific concentrated webinar is focused sincerely on tackling tummy troubles. So that is bloating, that is constipation, that is all sorts of digestive issues, that's excess skin, um, inflammation, gallstones, whatever it is that we could be having, um, different, different troubles when it comes down to our stomach ailments. So if you guys are ready to get started, Basically, this is how this goes. I definitely want to apologize in advance for any type of technical issues that we may have. You know, this is the World Wide Web. At the end of the day, a lot of things are not in our control. But I definitely want to go ahead and apologize in advance if anybody receives technical issues. But I do have a tech person that is on site that will be able to catch um, or, or answer any questions that you may have pertaining to any of your tech issues. So how this pretty much goes. Welcome to Sunday. Welcome to this webinar. How this goes is you will see me, but you will hear me majority of the time. I will flip back and forth to a PowerPoint presentation that everyone will definitely receive, not to mention this is this webinar is recorded. So do not feel bad if you missed something or didn't get to write something down in time. Um, all of that stuff is going to be sent over to you for you to actually watch at your leisure. It will be sent in a zip file. So all of those who are unable to actually attend it live, that is what everyone actually gets to receive. I apologize for the noise. We That's what happens when we are in urban Atlanta. So if you guys want to go ahead, get started, make sure you raise your hands over in the right hand side. Make sure you're very engaging. I believe in community and I believe that community is everything. So there are people that have um, established great authentic connections with other people that are in their hometowns, that are in their actual cities. And everybody's just kind of navigating a life of just absolute betterment. So that is what this entire webinar is. My first definite disclaimer is I am not a medical professional. I am a human being <laughs> that is living just a healthier lifestyle. So that is what I call a healthy practitioner. So I practice a healthier life navigation of just practicing wellness in all things. So this is none of these things are meant to be medical advice. I'm not telling anyone to come off of their medications. I'm just implementing just different tips and tools and products and recommendations that might be able to help you wherever you are in your life navigation system. And it looks different for every single person. So just be able to take the different tips and tools and things like that and incorporate them however you wish. So welcome to Tummy Troubles and let's get started. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Tierra Coes Green Tackling Tummy Troubles webinar. So what we are getting started with, this is the entire intention of this entire webinar is to just basically help people combat different issues and ailments that we are having on a regular basis with, like I said, our tummy troubles whether that is bloating, whether that is excess skin, whether you've given birth and have cesarean scars, whether you are dealing with ulcers, whether you just can't get your sugar cravings under control, 
whatever that is, you know, like how to actually come in, in conjunction with better gut health, conquering constipation, all sorts of different things that we are dealing with as a society, just as a whole. So definitely I wanted to welcome everyone into a space of just wellness. What I practice and what my actual personal philosophy is. I practice wellness. It is a holistic way. So I focus on the emotional aspects of health, the spiritual aspects of health, and the physical as well as the mental aspects of health. I believe that everything is a four-part harmony just for, so you're able to actually come together to bring a balance of everything. I think that everything is all about a harmonic flow of just understanding how exactly we are supposed to navigate this world and it's complicated and we get off track and we definitely get to spaces where we don't understand we do not we lose control something tragic may happen to us so hopefully this sunday it is bringing you to a space where you are able to pretty much just combat a lot of things that you chronically deal with on a regular basis so really understanding the difference between wellness and understanding healthy eating there is a difference so here's a nice overview of just a little bit of things that we are going to talk about. Like I said before, it will be about bloating, inflammation, constipation, better gut health if you're dealing with Crohn's, Grave, or Cialic diseases, um, stress, ulcers, just some different things to where we can all come together to understand our truth. So I definitely say get your pens and paper out now. Make sure you're able to take some notes throw out questions if you actually have any, and just be able to navigate this space knowing that this is a safe space. I will not be able to tell you, okay, so you should do A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. It doesn't work that way. Our lifestyles are completely different. So being able to navigate just that space of life and understanding, no, these are just tips and tools and products to where you're able to take whatever applies for you, whatever your finances allow, whatever it is to where you're able to actually navigate to that space and understanding your own truth. You know, like, and I believe that the truth isn't something that you use to shame other people, but it's a way of revealing us in a more completely way so we can actually better love one another. And that love starts with inside of ourselves. So we're able to actually be contributors beyond ourselves, but to our families. And maybe you're not bloated, maybe you're not inflamed, maybe you're not constipated, but maybe someone else is, or you're actually able to make a difference in someone else's life. And that's just by understanding your own stomach or your kidneys or your large intestines or how your adrenal glands truly work. So being able to really understand how all of that stuff comes together and it all has to be in a four part harmony in some way, shape or form. Otherwise, it's going to be systems overload and people are not going to understand. And then here's all these alarms. Now you have a headache and now your body is completely shutting down and you don't know why you just poo pooed out green stuff. And it's like, hold on, wait, what's going on? You know, like really understanding how all that stuff truly comes together. It all starts with the mind. It starts with your mind and then it starts with your mouth. What we think is what we are. We have to really understand how to get to a space where we're able to truly train our minds to think about our blessings as opposed to our problems. It's one way to know that there's an issue, but what are we truly doing about the issue? What is the action behind the thought? Are we emotionally eating? Are we feeding our our physical body or are we feeding our emotional selves really understanding how that stuff truly works hand in hand understanding also shortcuts what are the shortcuts we have so many different quick fixes that are out here on the market today we have the slim tummy tees we have the waist trainers we have the shakes you know like when it comes down to it, I don't understand, you know, as easy as that stuff goes. And yes, you will definitely lose weight if you go and do the lemonade cleanse. As easy as it falls off, that's as easy as it's going to come right back. So let's understand how to truly get to the space where we understand what we are doing on a regular basis to where it's not just, oh, you know, a short fix. Now, sometimes 
you definitely just kind of need to be skinny for that night. So that waist trainer definitely may come in handy. Or, hey, I just, you know, I, I got a little swollen or this might be my bloat week. Yes, go and put you on some Spanx <laughs> just to be able to fit into that specific dress or fit, in, fit into something for that specific occasion. But ideally, we want to be able to zip it up without any problems or complications or alterations. So what do we do in order to just really have that body without all of this equipment or really just have that that the body starts on the inside, you know, like really understanding how to really work through those ailments with inside of ourselves, you know, like nobody's actually running around talking about, hey, I suggest you just go ahead. Are you trying that new valet diet? Because, you know, if you was on that new valet diet, you'll be running up and down all the different parking lots, in and out of cars, jumping in and out and running back. And you have some new balances. You have your shoes. You have your equipment. You really understand how that stuff works. Nobody's doing that part. Everybody's actually looking for something that they can rub on, inhale, swallow or spray on or, you know, some sort of cream in order to shortcut it. At the end of the day, you cannot shortcut greatness. That is not how that works. Short term, yes, it definitely may work. But understand, everything is going to be temporary. It works for the time being. You can be go ahead and put on that waist trainer, but if that's what you're doing for the next three months instead of working out, yeah, waist trainer definitely gonna make you skinny today, but you're gonna need a liver tomorrow. Really understanding how all of that stuff it works in the four part harmony. You know, like so as quick as you lose it is as quick as it truly comes back. Let's go ahead and bust some myths. I am the myth bust buster today. <laughs> really understanding how what we think, that is where everything starts. We think, oh, I just have all of this excess skin because of da 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 da. I, we all think that all fats are bad for you. That is not true. We actually need a major amount of omegas, which come from avocados or coconuts or walnuts or coconut oil even. As I stated, all fat is not bad fat. Really understanding how that really works. A lot of people think that they can eat whatever they want and exercising is enough. That is not the truth. That is not the way that we're able to navigate through things. You can never outwork a bad diet. You cannot do it. It will not work. Yes, you might drop some pounds. Once again, it looks temporary. But ideally, what are your organs looking like? How are your lungs improving? Are you just only trying to improve your biceps or are you trying to improve everything all the way around the board? So really understanding how that stuff really works and also understanding your expectations within those things. We put unrealistic expectations on our body so much. We expect our bodies to reverse 30 years of complete abuse in a matter of two days because we have a wedding to go to in, in three weeks. That's unrealistic or, oh, my birthday is coming up, so I scheduled a cruise. So now I have to undo 30 years of work and 30 years of abuse when ideally that is not the way that it truly works. Another myth is breakfast is the most important meal. I definitely want to go around that because I don't personally believe that you're supposed to Carb up your body at the beginning of the day. We are go out and eat all sorts of different things just to make sure that we think that um, our brains are going to work right or our bodies are going to work right or, oh, I needed this bagel and this coffee because I'm not going to have time until lunchtime to possibly get something else. So let me make myself full so my body can just reserve off of that. That is not true. It's the way and what we're digesting for breakfast. I believe in nutritionally overloading yourself. So breakfast isn't something that you just completely eat. It's something that you actually take. I believe in that is the first thing that I do in the morning. I want to completely nutritionally overload my entire body. So I am going to drink all the juice. I'm going to put in all the green stuff. I'm going to do all my superfoods because like, we are all thinking, I don't have time to come back and do this 
all over again. So what do I do? I'll go ahead and make me an entire juice. No, it's not good. I have the rest of my day to actually taste and divulge in things that are actually good. But what does my body truly need for the maximum efficiency to make sure that everything is targeted? So that morning I woke up and I made sure I fed my small intestine. I made sure I fed my cells. I made sure I fed my stomach, my liver. You know, so when I finally do get hungry, I'm able to really choose whatever meal it is that I choose to partake in because at the end of the day, my body already has everything that it needs. I believe that you're supposed to set your body up for greatness as opposed to just throw it and expect it to just recover the way that it's supposed to recover. It doesn't work that way. It needs help just like we need help. Protein only comes from animals. That is a myth. Think about it, people. We don't eat animals that eat other animals. We eat animals that are eating nuts and seeds and grass and grains and fruits and vegetables. Hmm. We're not out here asking gorillas where do they get their protein from. And gorillas got six packs. Well, some of them, chimpanzees, um, <laughs> a few other animals actually have six packs. But y'all get the gist, the gist. So really understanding how that stuff truly works. I want to go to the source of everything. So if the elephant is that big and that massive and able to pull down trees and move things around, huh, how did it get that strong and it only eats herbs and grass and fruits and nuts and vegetables? How does that work? So really understanding just the myths behind protein. We also believe that salt is bad for us and wheat is good for you. That is wrong. Wheat is one of the main contributors to a lot of the bloating, a lot of the constipation, majority of the stress, majority of the inflammation, and it is setting off all of your receptors, it's setting off all of your organs, it's setting off all sorts of alarms, and it's not us. We're, we're taught to believe that wheat is good for us. Not this wheat. They messed it up. They messed it up. We're going to get into that a little bit later. Salt is bad for you. Nope, that's another myth. We're taught to believe that all salt is bad for us. Salt is not bad for us. It's the type of salt that we're ingesting that is bad for us. It is the, the, the ionized salt that is completely bad for us. Those are the things that are taking away and depleting our energy as opposed to energizing us and giving us greatness back into our bodies. Number six, Eating healthy is too expensive or it just tastes bad. Also, another myth, if we have enough money to go out and get our hair done, our haircuts, um, go out and have happy hour multiple times a week, if we're able to do, we put our money in so many other elements as opposed to our actual health or healthy living. There's shortcuts all through everything. You can pay $7 for a sauce and not have to buy it for another year. You know, like you can do so many different things when it comes down to cutting through the expenses of what it is. And at the end of the day, if you eat healthy, I'm pretty sure you would save a lot more money in medical bills or pharmaceutical interest or just even co-pays. So ideally, that is an entire objective as to what we really want to do. And if you think healthy, healthy eating tastes bad, that is just where your creativity should come into play. You have to get more creative. You'd be surprised what red peppers and mushrooms and asparagus and, and garlic and onions actually do when it comes in harmony with one another. It creates something magical and beautiful, and you'll think that it's a symphony orchestra on your taste buds. So really understanding what those myths are and I'm just retaining water. How many people do we have, those friends or the family members that literally, I believe environment is everything. Hey girl, I'm just bloated because I'm just retaining water. You know, no, 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 no. Let's go ahead and run down a list of I'm just bloated because. I'm just bloated because actually I'm lying to myself and I don't give myself everything, the time, the energy that I truly need. I'm really lazy and I don't want to work out. I don't want to work for it. Or, oh, I'm bloated because I'm just big boned. It just runs in my family. That's not true. You know, like I know a lot of surgeons, I'm pretty sure we can actually YouTube a lot of different um, surgical procedures. And I think all of our ribs usually come out the same shape. 
you know, like give or take, you know, height might may be a factor. But at the end of the day, I think our bone structures are pretty much identical just as human beings, just as a human as a whole. Or I'm bloated because I had kids. No, 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 ladies. No, 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 no. How old is your kid? <laughs> How old is your kid? Actually, your kid's a teenager or a young adult, or they probably are an adult. You know, like that's not why you're bloated. Let's be honest with ourselves. Or I'm bloated because this just runs in my family or, you know, like I, my entire family is like this. We all just thick. We're all just, you know, this way. No, that's a myth as well. We're, we're definitely going to combat all of those. The final myth is veggies give me gas. I am so sorry. I am so sorry that the veggies give you gas. My mother is a prime example of the veggies give you gas syndrome. She thinks she cannot eat broccoli. <laughs> she thinks she cannot eat broccoli because it gives her gas. Mom. Maybe your broccoli shouldn't come in plastic. Just a thought, you know, just a thought. Have we tried the broccoli that is not wrapped in saran wrap and styrofoam? Let's try that part. Or hey, let's get the veggies that aren't frozen. You know, let's get that part. You know, like let's really, really, I don't think the green giant is your friend. I don't, I, I really don't think um, he's out for your best interest. But really just being able, this webinar is to debunk all of these myths and just, let's just understand our expectations as a whole. So how many people really have been to the space where we've all felt like this? <laughs> been there, done that body balancing, understanding that our environment is everything, usually after a nice celebratory event, whether that is graduation parties or a birthday party, or maybe it was Thanksgiving or Christmas, or you know, even after a funeral, we get together with our families and we have these moments, really understanding what our body is trying to balance. What is the point of us coming together to spend time with family when we all kind of fall out and look like this? What type of friends are we putting and pouring our energy into when this is what they are trying to get to is this space? Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Well, what are we, what are we doing? Why are we trying to hurt ourselves in this shape, in this manner? Really understanding how to maximize what it is that we've truly been given. These bodies are a gift. They are a gift from divinity. And what are we doing with it when we are making it do things just like this? We all fall out. And sometimes I believe it is time to take it down a notch. Sometimes you do need to just put yourself out for a minute. A lot of our time, a lot of the times our brains are in active overload and we just kind of definitely need something to just make us fall out. That's when we go outside and take a nice walk in nature. Let's go ahead and take a nice bath. Don't worry about cleaning the bathtub. <laughs> That's when we really go ahead and just find more productive ways to avoid this issue because it's never fun. It's never fun. You know, like, and as I said, being able to not go to the space while socializing with family time or understanding how your body is like, oh my gosh, it's stressed out now because it's, it's going into completely overload when it comes down to your hormones. So yeah, you feel good right now and then you crash and then the next three days is going to be a whole nother situation. So with seeing all of that, we have to understand that our bodies are our building. We all own a building. So let, let's look at this as a whole, as a complete collective. This is a image of a city. This is where your community is. This is, you know, all sorts of, this represents each individual. Some buildings definitely don't look like the other unless they were modeled after each other. So that's identical twin sisters, twin towers, whatever the case may be. You're, you were not by design to be like anything else. Yes, there are similarities. We have windows, we have antennas, we have lights, we have reflective glass planes, we have parking garages, we have all of these air conditioning units and copy machines. But ideally, let's look at ourselves just like we see these buildings. Really understanding these buildings, we inherited. So we came here on this planet already equipped with certain tools. 
sometimes, you know, buildings were set up a little bit different. And a lot of times you have to kind of um, go in and restructure things a lot more. Sometimes you just walk into a magnificent building and it's already done and they had nice funding behind it. And a lot of other buildings are just complete fixer uppers, you know, like and some of them are about to teeter over and just fall out. Or honestly, you have some that are abandoned. A lot of them have businesses on the inside and it's all sorts of little businesses and different corporations that are being able to just navigate through there. There are people that are living in some of these buildings. It's just like, whoa, how is there a whole family living in here? Nobody even knew about it. So let's understand that our bodies are a building. In those buildings, we have DNA, we have blood cells, we have genetics, we have all sorts of different things. We have brains, we have fingers, we have lungs, we have all of our internal organs, we have all of these things inside of these buildings. So understanding how not to compare your building to another building, understanding, hey, you're a building, I'm a building, and we work different. We were designed different. So being able to see someone else who has something that you want, it's just like, no, we're not looking at it as a competition or anything like that. We're looking at it as inspiration. You might see somebody else's building. It's just like, oh, yeah, let me go ahead and get me some curtains. I might go ahead and get me some bamboo curtains instead of the silk curtains because I can't really afford the silk curtains right now. But at the end of the day, it inspires you to do something with your own creativity. So when it comes down to these buildings, that is what our bodies are. Understanding the blueprint of our buildings. There's so many different things that are inside of these buildings that we don't even know what it does. Our oral cavities, our tongues, our livers, you know, our gallbladders, pancreases, all these different things. Let's think of those as our systems and our structures. There's different alarm coding. So oh, here's some pain. Oh, here's some fat. Here's some cellulite. Here's a couple stretch marks. We're going to go ahead and build a stretch mark community on our stomach. Really understanding how that stuff truly works. All of these departments. So when you are in pain, and that is when the ulcers come, when your small intestine is in pain, that is Crohn's disease, that is Graves' disease. When you're understanding gallstones or what is actually happening with the constipation, all of those, we are going to learn that those are our alarm systems. When you have gas, that's an alarm system. When your stomach is cramping, that's an alarm system. When it bloats or it pudges, that's an alarm system. When it actually starts retaining fat, that's an alarm system. When it starts retaining extra skin, another alarm system. So now we have all of these alarm systems, whether that's the fire alarms starting to go off, the car alarms are going off because in your building you have a parking garage or you might have a parking lot, everybody looks different. So all these car alarms are starting to go off and you're like, hold on, what's that sound? Imagine if you've never heard a car alarm before. It's going to scare the mess out of you. You don't know what that sound is. You never heard it before. You don't even have anything to relate it to. Or maybe it's not even the car alarm. Maybe it is someone's cell phone that is in the car, that is inside of the car. So it's very faint. That can be a cramp. That can be, you know, just a little form of discomfort. That could be a gallstone. You know, there's just a little faint sound where it's just like, mm, if I ignore it, it just kind of becomes a part of way of life. Or how many people have smoke detectors in their homes where the batteries are dying and you just keep hearing the beep and then you still just don't change the battery at all. And that beep is still going and you just ignore it. That's the same thing when it comes down to these pain indicators. Or maybe somebody's sprinkler system went off. There is irritable bowel syndrome. There is all of these different indicators that are telling you, hey, something's off, something is wrong, something, hello, we're trying to alarm you in some way, shape, or form. Here's these motion detectors that are going off. Here's all of these systems that are going off. So we don't know what to do. That's what's happening inside of our buildings. So really understanding the alarms within the coding that we were never taught. We were never taught how our buildings work. We were just inherited. We just inherited them. So we just got here on this planet and was just like, all right, hey, planet, we are here. Okay, so I have some arms. Yep, I have some arms. I understand some people don't have those. Cool, awesome. I have some phalanges. 
awesome. I have, you know, uh, some ribs. Yep, I like ribs. Understanding how that stuff truly works and what they are there for and what they truly do. Being able to really understand all the different departments. So when we understand how all of these different departments, because they are businesses, when we understand how the departments work, we're able to have a beautiful, productive, successful business that is thriving out of this building. So really understanding how that stuff truly works and what are the emotional connections and the receptors that gear towards that as well. So understanding the truth is majority of the problems that we are chronically dealing with, as I stated, the inflammation, the gallstones, the ulcers, the excess skin, the bloating, the constipation, um, the stomach issues, the adrenal gland issues, the kidney issues, all of that, the fat is stored in the cortisol hormone. If we don't know what cortisol is, and mind you, I'm just feeding you guys things to be able to look and just spark plugs with inside of your own brain to where you're able to understand and just take something away from this to where you're able to be better with inside of just your own understanding. Once you understand how to navigate these things, this is the indicator of everything else. So with this cortisol, let's put this in layman terms. So Cortisol is that hormone where there are no limits that apply to it. So we know that little X-Man that was kind of like a little shapeshifter that was just able to go into anything. Could he transform into anything? No, but he could actually shapeshift so he could go behind walls. It's just like, oh yeah, there are no limits. You need me to go into this airplane right now? Awesome. You need me to go to HR department right now? Cool. You know, like no problem when it came down to that. It was able to be a shapeshifter. The cortisol hormone, that is what cortisol does. So it is the regulator of the high blood pressure. It increases the blood sugar. It's able to actually affect people in with their arthritis. It decreases the immune system or it's it will be a nice happy day with cortisol when cortisol shows up or it will be a not so happy day when cortisol shows up. It's all about how you're truly feeding cortisol. So really understanding what cortisol and that hormone actually does. When we are releasing that hormone, that's when we want the pasta and the sugar and all of that. It is a happy hormone, but it's also happy off of broccoli. It likes beets, but there's so many different ailments that really factor into that cortisol. So women... All of my women who actually have grown babies or maybe have not grown babies, maybe you just have a hormonal imbalance or your thyroids are messing with you or, uh, you know, like you just got to a space where you're overweight and you can't understand like how I even got to this space. That is what cortisol actually does. Cortisol is affects women differently because that is the space where we actually hold weight. It's coming from the bottom of our stomachs. So women hold weight specifically just because we're meant to grow life. So understanding how that truly works, a lot of emotional eating is due to this specific hormone. So a lot of people say, oh my gosh, you know, I'm hormonal and I ended up eating this, that, and the other, and so on and so forth. I did an entire webinar a few months ago, which is still available on tiergoesgreen.com that is completely focusing on emotional eating. So it is all about heal what you feel and understanding how the emotional eating truly works. Cortisol is that hormone. You are not crazy. <laughs> I definitely want everybody to know you are not crazy. There are different chemicals that are trip wires that are going up and down and all over the place and all through everything, all through sales, taking away hydration, all of this stuff that's really, really, really breaking those things down. So if you have a quick mood change when you become hostile, um, hostile, that's definitely one thing. Or if you go to the other end and become depressed or hypertension, or if you're just sleepy, that's because we need cortisol to actually work for us in a great space as opposed to a negative space. Now we are in the beautiful society that profits from problems. So we are chemically drugged on purpose. Is that something I wish that we 
could work around, we definitely can. But when we don't understand the chemicals that we're feeding ourselves, things like this happen. And this specific hormone takes over and it goes wherever it needs to go in order to make us feel however we need to feel. So cortisol is a key component to a lot of people's emotional eating. So understand, once again, this is a huge space where we actually store a lot of fat in our midsections, or we store the excess skin or the inflammation. Something is wrong when it comes down to that cortisol, but cortisol can be happy as well. So just understanding how stress is a huge indicator when it comes down to where we are carrying our weight. So being able to really understand how that stuff truly works and understanding the fast food. How did I end up in the line of Taco Bell? I don't want no Taco Bell, but I ended up at Taco Bell because they then came out with this new Chalupa, crunchy, cheesy, melty something, and it's a dollar. So, yep, let me go ahead and get that. Understanding that fast foods clog our veins and they clog our arteries and they thicken the blood because heart attacks, strokes, obesity, diabetes, and degenerative diseases, constipation, aging, electrolytes, stress, all of that stuff, mood swings, food addiction, all of that stuff, all of that comes from to change the way that we feel. So understanding that the calories from eating fast food, they must be immediately burnt off or else the diseases will start. So really understanding how you know, exercising to burn off all of those sorts of calories. And I don't focus more or less on the calories. Let's focus on the chemicals here. You know, like we don't have to count calories when we're counting chemicals. So that sickness that actually begins with when you eat that sort of junk. And eating isn't just a physical food. It's an emotional food. It's a spiritual food. It's a mental food. You know, like, so really understanding how these things play into, into abyss with that means that your body failed to get rid of the junk. And that's when all of these diseases start. So being okay with understanding how to work around why we're feeding ourselves these things and the, the hormone that we're feeding because cortisol is going to take over. Understanding our internal organs. Our body is a business, you guys. It's a business, okay? So really understanding what this business is. So everything plays a business inside of this beautiful building, and this is what we are doing. So, you know, we have Leo, who's the liver. Leo is the accounts receivable department. Let's go ahead and just name him Leo. Or not even him, because Leo's kind of androgynous. So Leo just shows up to work. Everything is filtered through Leo. Everything has to come through Leo. Leo sees everything. Leo sees everything before everybody else sees everything. So you never want to make Leo mad. But understand, Leo has to work every single day. Leo is showing up every single day just to make sure the rest of the business is actually working in great harmony. We don't want Leo to be upset. We don't want Leo to be angry or mad. So we have Leo the liver who is in charge of the accounts receivable department. We all have to go to work every single day. So let's go ahead and break this down into what people are able to relate these things to. We also have Sabrina who is the stomach. She is the receptionist. So Sabrina is the one that takes in everything. She takes in all the phone calls. She's taking all the sticky notes. She's seeing all the different post-its. She's seeing everybody's, ooh, they're, they're mistresses. They're, they, she's seeing everything. Like Sabrina is taking all the phone calls. Sabrina is taking in everything. Nothing gets past Sabrina. But always remember, it had to go through Leo first before it even got dispatched to Sabrina. Understand Priscilla, who is the pancreas. Now, Priscilla, 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 the pancreas is the CEO of this company. Okay. So everything has to go through Priscilla. Understanding gallbladder Gary. Gary is pretty much like the HR department. So he's the one that kind of, you know, just kind of moves everything around, filtrates everything. You know, he's the one that's in charge of payroll that dispatches all of that stuff, you know, and that's also, you know, a person that comes in and all the problems report to Gary. So Gary be tired too. He got a long day. And then we have the twins who, you know, inherited the company because, you know, you got Carla and Carl, the kidneys. They are fraternal twins. 
They are not identical, but that is the president and the vice president of your business. That is the president and the vice president of your corporation. You have Sage, who is the small intestine. So we have Sage, who's the small intestine. She is over the clerical department. We also have Larry, who's the large intestine. Larry is all things in the mail room. So Larry is the one that's dispatching everything. He's walking around and dropping off everybody's mail. That is what Larry actually does. Larry's very active as well. Then we have Clyde, the colon. So Clyde, the colon, he's kind of like the janitor. He's the janitor in this entire thing. So he's the one that just kind of throws out everything. He gets real messy. Clyde don't really have the best smell ever. So nobody really wants to deal with Clyde. But he's real important, too, because if things get backed up or if Clyde take off for a couple days, it's going to leave a very foul smell in the entire corporation. This business, everybody's going to be disgruntled. Everybody's going to be angry because it just stinks. The entire place just stinks. Everybody trying to figure out what that smell is. Larry just said, not even Larry, Clyde just said, you know what? I'm just off. I'm just going to take off for a couple days because I didn't sign up for this. Really understanding how Clyde the colon truly works. Then we have Sophia, who is the spleen. Sophia is like the tech department of your business. So Sophia is the one that's able to dispatch everything that you actually need. She comes in and she fixes everything and she fixes, you know, the, the systems. So Sophia is the tech department. Then you have esophagus Eddie. Eddie is in charge of the esophagus. Eddie is kind of like the concierge because yes, we have a concierge because this is a, you know, this is a hypothetical luxury building. So we, you know, gonna do it real fancy. Our, fan, our buildings are real fancy around these parts. That is what we are doing today in this beautiful building. We're in Manhattan or Dubai or wherever else it is that we have beautiful buildings. Then we have Thomas the Tongue. Thomas the Tongue is your valet. Like I said, it is a luxury building. We have luxurious anemones. So we have all of these different people. We have Leo the liver, Sabrina the stomach, Priscilla the pancreas, gallbladder Gary. We have the twins, Carl and Carla, who is the president and the vice president. We have Sage, who is in charge of clerical. We have the large intestine, Larry, who's in charge of the mailroom. We have esophag I mean, esophagus, Eddie, who is the concierge. So Sophia, the spleen, who is part of the tech department. We have Thomas, the tongue, who is the valet. And then we have Clyde, the colon. No particular order. We don't know what people's hours are. We don't know when they show up for work. All we know is they get paid to do their job. And if any one of them does not do their job or any one of them is kind of angry that day, it's going to throw off the entire system. So we want to have a nice, beautiful business. This is our crew. This is our team. This is everything that we need to come together in order to make this business thriving, not just thrive, but very, very successful. And mind you, there will be no layoffs. If there are any layoffs or any terminations, that's when everything else is going downhill. So really understanding how that stuff works, just hand in hand. This is our business. Our bodies are our business. And these are our buildings. The liver. Let's talk about Leo for a second, who is the accounts receivable department. The liver is the space where it removes all of your toxins. It prevents shortages of the nutrients. So imagine the people who go out and have their nice adult beverages all the time. I am a firm believer that you can do whatever you want as long as there's moderation within everything. When it comes down to flooding our livers and targeting our livers on a regular basis, let's just break down what the word actually says in the spelling of the word. It is liver, L-I-V-E. So you have to live there. That is a very, very, very important role for the rest of our business, for our entire bodies, for these buildings to even function properly. You know, like the liver is the most, it's the place that produces the most proteins by the body. So if things are being flooded in there that deplete it, work isn't getting done. And the liver definitely helps your body fight infection. So if your liver is infected, it doesn't have the capabilities or the capacities to fight everything else because it's too occupied trying to recover from whatever it is that you did to it. 
and did not know how to balance it. So if the liver is the one that is helping your body fight off the infections or the bacteria or whatever it is that you that you fed into your bloodstream, it's occupied. So here comes inflammation. Now the liver is stressed out. Now Leo sitting here walking around like, man, I did not sign up for this. Why am I here? Why did anybody even call me in today? I didn't sign up for this. Imagine, you know, you going out and getting completely hammered and alcohol isn't the only way that you're able to affect your liver. It can be with processed foods. It can be all sorts of different things. So Larry by himself, not Larry, Leo by himself, he is the liver. He is upset. You didn't gave him 30 years of work and expect him to go ahead and work it out in three days. He's like, no, 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 I didn't sign up for this. I didn't sign up for this. When I accepted this job, you know, he went to orientation. He didn't sat down and he got his little packet. He didn't bought some new work clothes, all sorts of stuff. So when you just flooded him with all of this, Leo's in shock. Leo don't know what to do. It's like, no, I showed up here to, you know, do do my job and I just need to be able to do my job. Now, I'm not trying to do the job of Sabrina because she didn't feel like answering the phone today and Sabrina's the stomach or, oh no, gallbladder Gary didn't call it off. So now I have to do his work too. No, I didn't sign up for that. So when we do toxic things or we never, ever, ever go to Leo's department and clean because we don't know what Leo is. Leo's very androgynous. So we don't know what Leo is. So I can't say he or she because it's just a it's just a fact of what Leo actually is. When we never ever clean that out, Leo is a place where we have to focus on on a regular basis. Leo likes garlic, grapefruit, green tea, mustard greens, avocados, walnuts. Those are things that Leo actually needs. Those are his tools or her tools that they need to actually function on a regular basis. So those are things that should just always be fed. One way that I often think to look at our bodies is it's never just flooding everything all at once. It's never just doing one thing all at once. Like, oh my gosh, I have to go in here and I have to, you know, flush it all out to get, no, 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 no. We're going to focus on one thing at a time. Let's just pick Mondays. Mondays is the day that we focus on our liver. Tuesdays is the day that we focus on our pancreas. Wednesdays are the days that we focus on our kidneys. I say just pick a day and just pick an organ and navigate your juices or your foods or whatever the case may be purely intentional for that specific organ. And that's where I believe the harmony within health can actually reside. It's never just flooded all at once. You're trying to do or undo over 20, 30, 40, 50 years of work all within a five day detox. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> we didn't get to those spaces in five days. We didn't get to those spaces in 10 days. It's unrealistic to put those sorts of expectations on these beautiful departments that we have been blessed with. So really understanding how to work in harmony with our bodies in that aspect. Like I said, there are no layoffs when it comes down to this department. One thing is you never want to piss Leo off ever because it's going to break down the function of everything else. And as I said, Leo is where everything lives. Live, live, live. Have your adult beverage, balance it out later. You have to flush that out. It can't stay. It's not allowed to stay. So really understanding how to eat and to drink in accordance with that. Alcohol is one of the main contributors to why people <laughs> gain and keep weight. It's one thing to have your adult beverage. You never flushed it out. So how is it coming out? Drinking water isn't enough. You have to come in with some real force. You really think water is going to overpower red wine or overpower that margarita? Think how quick that margarita got into your system. Water doesn't work that way. It takes a little while. It's a nice little steady stream and flow, but water, I mean, the margarita didn't spike you really, really quick. Is throwing your entire body into shock. We have to be honest with ourselves. If we're indulging in adult beverages more than once a week, we are storing only, and that's the only way that your body is able to metabolize alcohol, is it turns it into sugar. So if you're drinking more than three times a week, understand why the weight is not leaving. Understand why your organs are not working. You're not giving the things that it needs to recover. 
So you're throwing all of this stuff in there, expecting it to just do the work because it's in there. That's not the way that it works, ideally. So really understanding how to truly love our livers, truly love Leo, really understanding how to have what we want and flush it out. We're not just going to overload it with everything else and expect it to just work great. It doesn't work that way. Our pancreas. So our pancreas' name is Priscilla. Priscilla is pre-diabetic. Priscilla is the CEO of this entire company. Priscilla loves, 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 loves sugar. Really understanding what the pancreas does. The pancreas receives food and it converts that food only. She received the food from the liver. So she receives the food and converts that food into a source of energy. And that is for the body. You know, so, so many people don't really understand what the pancreas truly does. So like I said, Priscilla has a sugar addiction, but Priscilla is also the CEO of this entire business. So all of these spaces, these are what our stomach are comprised of. This is what our entire midsection, it's, just, it's not just our stomach. It's all of these different departments that work in harmony in order to make everything else flow and function. But Priscilla, like I said, she's pre-diabetic, so she always wants the sweet stuff. She actually thinks that she likes it, but at the end of the day, that's the only thing that she feels gives her a spike or wakes her up. No, but Priscilla also, a healthy Priscilla, a healthy pancreas really likes berries, spinach, pomegranate seeds, bell peppers, grapes, mangoes, all sorts of pineapples. You have to feed her the things that she thinks that she wants. She doesn't want Krispy Kreme. She doesn't want Dunkin' Donuts. She really does not want an old fashioned donut from Starbucks, even though they're absolutely amazing, delicious every single time. I don't know how they do that every single time. She does not want that. She really, really, really wants some papaya. She really wants a coconut, you know, like, so you kind of have to override and always impress Priscilla because Priscilla will have you going left field and you will think that that's where you're supposed to go because she's the boss and she's the CEO of this entire company. But at the end of the day, it's like, yo, Priscilla, you kind of came um, with some issues. <laughs> you kind of came with these little factors that go in and I, I really didn't want um, that funnel cake. And I don't know how I ended up over here with this, this, ooh, this peanut butter bar parfait from KFC. I don't understand how I got hijacked right now. That is because Priscilla is the CEO of your entire corporation. That is what she does. She is going to say, hey, so I'm the boss. So this is what I want. And you go and get it. No, 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 no. You have to understand and be real, real, have some real discretion when it comes down to Priscilla, because if you know in your jet, in your best interest, that that's not what you're supposed to be doing, or that's just not in the best interest, because yeah, Priscilla might want it, but what about Leo? What about Sabrina? What about Gallbladder Gary? You know, like, what about the twins, Carl and Carla? You do not understand what else it does. So yes, Priscilla, you, you, you the boss, you the CEO, but at the end of the day, it's bigger than you. So really understanding how that stuff actually goes. So Priscilla, let's put this in an even more hypothetical situation. So Priscilla will have you out talking about, yeah, well, it's just a Snickers mini. It's not going to bother you. Don't worry about it. Just go ahead and just have a bite. You know, like, and you're thinking like, yes, I'm gonna go ahead and have a bite in this little Snickers mini. And it's not as bad as everything else. It's not as bad as the big Snickers. You know, you're thinking that you did something good because you had the Snickers mini instead of the bite size. I mean, instead of the king size Snickers, you know, like you actually did something better for yourself. No, 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 no. <laughs> like I said, Priscilla is pre-diabetic, y'all. Understand, she will not be in the best interest. Don't listen to her, ideally. You have to have all these other departments that really factor that in. We have to understand how concentrated sugar works. You know, yes, it's a bite-sized mini Snickers, but having that little bite size because that sugar is so concentrated, that is like trying to put jet fuel in your Honda Accord. It just don't work that way. It's like, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. We, we wasn't set up for this. 
you know, the entire business. Like I said, those alarm systems are going off like, oh no, you know, and then you got the little twins, Carl and Carlos and they're sliding down the sprinkler system because now the sprinklers then went off on the entire business. So now they're just sliding around like, yeah, we're great. We're awesome. That's the illusion. No, this is not sprinkler time. This is not how <laughs> this building is supposed to be running, but everybody's just, you know, follow la la la, just walking around like this is nice, you know? And then, after the sprinkler system goes off, it's like, wait a minute, now everything's wet. Now we have to go back and undo all of our work that we have been working on for the past two months. All because we decided, not even we decided, we got hijacked by Priscilla who told us to eat that Snickers mini and now we feel defeated out here in the world. And then where did this come from? Where did this cellulite come from? How did y'all grow? Think about cellulite the same way as if your basement got flooded, and even though the water's gone, there's still mildew growing, there's still mold growing, there's bacteria growing, there is this stench that's growing. So now everybody looking around like, man, now we have a whole nother problem. So really understanding how that part works. Our pancreas is kind of, sort of, very, really, really, really important. So we have to be mindful and feed our pancreas accordingly. Let's understand what Carl and Carla does. They are the president and the vice president. Mind you, they are fraternal twins. They are not identical. So even though they may look alike, they may have similarities, they have completely different responsibilities. So being able to really see Carl and Carla, like I said, they're fraternal. They navigate the water. They make sure that it's not too much or it's not too little. They regulate the blood pressure. One of the main indicators of what our kidneys are doing, especially from our women or men alike, men usually have the indicators on the back of their necks. If, you're, if the back of your neck tends to get a little dry or flaky or dark or discolored, that's telling you something is going on with inside of your kidneys. Ladies or men, if you have dark circles, that is a huge indicator that there needs to be some special, special, special attention paid to your kidneys because that is one of the major indicators. Anytime I accidentally dehydrate myself because I am not the best water drinker on the planet, I definitely don't drink water often. I have to flood myself because I don't like to have to go pee 50 million times a day. Me just being honest. So I will dehydrate myself whenever I have something to do road trips or even just have to leave the house on a regular basis. I will have to go and urinate at least every 15 minutes. Who has that to do? I don't even have that much tissue all the time. So really being okay with, oh man, here it goes again. In the first indicator, I see it on my face. Here goes these dark circles again. And honestly, there's not enough concealer. There is not enough concealer. Concealer can cover up color. It cannot cover up texture. So really understanding Carl and Carla, the kidneys, they get rid of the waste. There's all sorts of acid. It also gets rid of the urine. It definitely releases. It's very crucial when it comes down to the blood. So with our kidneys, when we're trying to target our kidneys, we want to eat things or drink things that, once again, look like blood. Think about beets. Think about dark carrots. Think about um, blueberries, strawberries. We want to do things and eat and digest things that look and feel exactly like the area we're trying to target. What is the best indicator that you could possibly think is good for your kidneys? I'm gonna give you a hint. It's a bean, it's a bean. They named them kidney beans for a reason. They look identical to our kidneys. I think God kind of knew some stuff a whole bunch when it came down to things. So it's like, hey, hey, hey. So you shouldn't even have any problems. Like you should not have any problems because I put this stuff right here that grows from the dirt and I gave it to you and I even made it look like you. What are you doing? What are you doing? How did you get over here with bad blood? How did you get over here and mess up your heart? What is this fat stuff? How did you do that? It's not supposed to work that way. So really going around those things and understanding what the kidneys truly do. And as I said, Carl and Carla, they do different things. Sometimes they fight. You know, one can actually live without the other. It will definitely survive, but it just has to work a lot, a lot, a lot more. So being at a space to where you're able to harmonize how those two truly come together and work together 
because they are the president and the vice president of this beautiful business and this amazing corporation in this awesome, luxurious building that we have grown and inherited here on this planet to be a part of this community and be a part of this city and be a part of everything else because it's not just one thing. It's all working on a holographic canvas of the whole. It's all playing into each other. Here are some herbs and different um, things from nature that definitely help your kidneys. You can target your kidneys. One of the best things that you can truly do, dandelion root, it comes in a tincture. It comes in an actual herb. It looks just like dandelion, just like the yellow ones that we used to weed be gone in the backyards growing up and tried to kill them because it just didn't go into harmony with the rest of the yard. Um, they're medicinal. That stuff does some amazing things. I feel so bad in my 30s for all the little dandelions that I used to pick and just, you know, tear the bugs off of. And they love me. They love me not I did all of that and once I realized like hey I can actually maintain a yard I like killed all the dandelions had I known of course you know my liver definitely was not as messed up back then but it's medicinal so understanding dandelion root is one of those major major herbs you can get it in a tincture you can buy the green leafy um the green leafy vegetable, you can buy all of that stuff for dandelion. It comes in a tea as well. Um, that is one thing that can help cleanse your kidneys on a regular basis. Parsley. Parsley is a heavy metal cleanser. So parsley goes in and it takes all of the heavy metals that is in your bloodstream or could be in any of those other departments. It's kind of like a street sweeper of the body if you allow it in there. Sometimes you just got to flood it. It's just like, yo, so I'm going to hit all of these streets all at once. We're just about to clean up everything. Go ahead and overdose on parsley, parsley tea, parsley, the juice. I much rather prefer all of these things in its original form. Um, and I'll just juice it all. It's like, okay, so I have four bundles of parsley. I have four bundles of dandelion. I'm going to throw a whole bunch of ginger in there. I'm going to throw some turmeric in there. Marshmallow, I've never found in that specific form or shape, but I do know that it comes in a tincture and it does come in a capsule. And I'm going to go ahead and overdose on celery. So I'm going to go ahead and buy five bundles of celery because it's 73 cents. So I didn't spend a whole $8 on everything that I have in front of me. And I'm about to set my kidney up for the entire week. That's not expensive. That's definitely not expensive. And how much was the blood pressure pills? How much was the slim tummy tea? How much were we truly spending to give the illusion as opposed to truly fixing the problem? So let's go deep down on the inside to really get these things out of us. Stinging nettle. Nettles are so amazing. And I just want to give everybody a nice little homework assignment and just Google what is the benefit of nettle. Hit Google images and you will be surprised. That stuff does everything. I've only had it in a tea form. Um, I've also had it in a tincture form, but I've never had the original, um, the original plant ever. So if you ever find your hands, I know it only grows in certain spaces. So if you ever find that, I definitely say indulge. But th these are all just things that you can definitely do on a regular basis just to target cleaning out your kidneys, cleaning out your blood. These are things that you can do on a regular basis. One of the main minerals that we need for our bodies, for our blood, for everything else is magnesium. One of my main food philosophies when it comes down to understanding how our bodies work, understanding how blood works, bloating, um, excess skin, all of that stuff, I focus mainly on the cells because the cells are like the electrical wires between everything else. So each little electrical cord, it all is in the harmony of everything else. In each one of those cords, it all has a different responsibility. So if you focus on your cells, and that's all that your skin is, that's all that your organs are, it's a concentration of different cells. So when you focus on your cells, you're able to override any sort of system you possibly want because now it's all electric. Now it's all raising at a different vibration of absolute betterment. When you're truly focusing on that element, you only get better. So understanding magnesium, that is a major, major mega mineral. Um, magnesium, it balances our pH levels. That definitely helps a lot when it comes down to our emotional eating. It definitely helps us 
sleep better. Um, it definitely helps our bone strength. It produces energy. You know, like magnesium is an important cofactor in our chemical reactions. So understanding how that really works. And magnesium, you can get that from so many things, green vegetables, nuts, seeds, barley, chickpeas. 80% of Americans in the U.S. are depleted from this specific chemical. So understanding what that is and understanding, you know, the symptoms of magnesium deficiency. There's so many different symptoms, you know, like so what goes in and robs magnesium because this is such an important, important, important mineral. What goes in and robs that is carb, carbonated beverages, you eating processed foods. Processed mm -hmm. is the type of food that has to go through a process before it gets to you. So if you can't go outside and actually reach down in a garden or off of a tree and pick it up in that original form, with the exception of beans, but if you're unable to go out and pick those up in its original form and digest it, then it is a processed food. It had to go through a process in order for it to become um, palatable or for it to become what you're actually able to eat on a regular basis. So understanding what the magnesium actually does and why it, it, it definitely helps so many different elements. So the asthma, the anxiety, the chemical sensitivity, um, it soothes all sorts of ulcers. It's a natural laxative. So if you're able to find it in a cream, I definitely recommend um, if you want something topical, there is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful handmade um, website and crafts and all sorts of creams and body um, products. And that is Kiss My Bath. I definitely recommend that. Everybody go and check out kissmybath.com. Um, but it's definitely one thing that I use, especially before working out. I concentrate a lot on my muscle cramps because sometimes you may dehydrate yourself where something may not have gotten where you need to go. Or at the end of the day, maybe I didn't get enough pumpkin seeds or I'm kind of malnourished today. Understanding how to really feed your cells and feed your body and making sure those nutrients get where they really need to get to. Okay, you guys, we have been lied to. This beautiful metropolis of concrete, blue jeans, and Pepsi. It was founded off of death and lies from the very beginning. It has not changed. It just looks different. So understanding we have been lied to in so many ways. These things are really bad, bad, bad for us. Wheat. Wheat is no longer in its original form. So now wheat metabolizes in your body strictly as sugar. We thought, oh my gosh, you know, we're eating wheat bread. That's better than white bread. No, 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 no. Actually, it's not. It's not at all. Understanding what wheat truly has been converted and turned into. A lot of people are now having all of these gluten allergies. Where's the gluten coming from? Was gluten here? 30 years ago, 40 years ago, where is this gluten? So many people are having different reactions when it comes down to wheat. And wheat is one of those words that has been completely manipulated the same way that sugar has. You see all of these different words and names of sugar? They change the language. So wheat is in that same component. There's a great book that I'm definitely going to refer um, and recommend everyone go out, buy, read, audio book. Um, audible, whatever you need um, to get the full comprehensive understanding that I definitely cannot explain within this allotted amount of time of the complexities of what wheat is. So we have been lied to. Wheat is a lie. Soy is also a lie. Soy is not good for us in any way. All of the things that are listed here on this page are direct correlations to our excess skin, to bloating, to constipation, to our gallstones, to messing up the functions of our kidneys, to our adrenal glands, to our lymph nodes, to anything that we can be experiencing, especially when it comes down to our midsection and our tummy troubles. These are direct correlations to what that is. Corn, soy is so bad, excuse me, soy is so bad because of the fact that it is all genetically modified now. The same with wheat, it probably was, 
once upon a time, a beautiful crop that did amazing beneficial things for our bodies. It is not that anymore. It is 2016 and a lot has changed from the way that the dirt is tilled to the agribusinesses to the big businesses that come and take over the industrialized food systems. So now the food that was once one thing, it is not anymore. And what we think that it is, it is not anymore. Corn is the same exact way. All of these are direct correlations to gluten as well. Corn is now 90 something percent. I don't, I can't even give complete facts of numbers or anything like that, but it's well over 90% all genetically modified. Anything genetically modified, that is a genetically modified organism. That is a GMO. So now it's no longer its original crop. Now it doesn't grow from a plant. It comes from a plant. So its DNA has been wired, rewired. So when something's DNA is rewired, that means it is no longer of this planet. So it's no longer a natural state. It's no longer a natural source. So what it used to be, that's not what it is. So basically, these are clones. So we're putting clones in our bodies on a regular basis. Sugar. We know sugar is bad for, for us, but we don't really, really, really know how bad sugar is for us. There is a beautiful documentary, and I recommend every single parent, every single human, every single teacher, educator, go and watch this movie. It is on Netflix. It is called Fed Up. Watch that. There's another movie called The Food, um, not The Food, The Sugar, okay, I'll think of it in another couple minutes, Sugar Something. Okay, I'm going to come back to it. I'm going to stop. Um, <laughs> but there's so many different words when it comes down to this specific word. Understanding the language of what these things are and what is being targeted with us, we will understand why we can't get skinny. We are being poisoned for profit. Not even, hey, I'm not even trying to get skinny. I'm just trying to get rid of my stomach. I just don't want it to hurt. You know, like I just don't want to be bloated after every time I eat. When we understand the fundamentals of what we are eating and what are the direct contributors, we are able to navigate a little bit better. I'm pretty sure a lot of us are not walking around trying to put ourselves in carb comas. You know, we don't necessarily want to do that. So really understanding how that stuff really works. You know, like even potato chips, they are greasy and they are thin, little toilet tissues, thin size slice of potatoes in the shape of chips. You know, not realizing that there are two grams of sugar that that turns into, and it's 75 different grams of carbohydrates that turns into something else. So here's 333 calories that all came in one chip. So that is a direct correlation within the potatoes. The potatoes are not good. Don't eat the white potatoes. Don't eat those elements. Now, we have sweet potatoes. We've always had sweet potatoes. You can still eat potatoes. Just make sure it's a colored potato that your body does not metabolize as sugar. It's not necessarily, oh, no, I don't eat candy and I don't eat, you know, cake or muffins or anything like that. All of these other things, especially make sure you read your ingredients and see what these words are. Really see how those things are working and correspondent to you. So that film is called That Sugar Film. That is the name of it. <laughs> it's on Netflix. Watch that one. It's really, really good. But when your body is metabolizing all of these things as sugar, that's when you get the headaches. That's when you're dizzy. That's when you get the grumpy. And look at all of these different names. It doesn't just say sugar. No, 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 no. It, that would actually be easy. What is dextran? We probably seen that word five times, had no idea. It's just like, no, girl, I'm doing this sugar-free diet this week. Anything that says sugar-free or fat-free, that is nothing but chemical just disaster waiting to happen. So you guys be mindful of these direct contributors. And mind you, you cannot escape it. There is no good way to do these things. So when you indulge in these things, have your moment. If you're going to have rice or have potatoes, make sure it's colored. Make sure it has an actual color. You know, like you can have black rice. You can have um, forbidden rice. You can have wild rice. There's other ways to do things, but always be mindful. Anytime you put something inside of your body, think about what our bodies are. Our bodies are over 90% water. And it's at a certain temperature of heat. 
that it naturally stays regulated on a regular basis. So understanding when we put those things inside of us, that's what it becomes. We expand in that same aspect. There's no way to roll your eyes or to deny just that fact. It does that. So that's what the rice does. We put rice and water and then it expands and it has to stay hot or otherwise it's just not as good. It does the same thing in our bodies. The same thing with the pasta, the bread, or anything puffy, anything puffy. I've gotten asked that a few times, like, what is that? You know, like, what is it to where, girl, I can't, I can't stop eating sandwiches. No, if you want a flat stomach or if you want your body to be at a certain space, just stop eating sandwiches for a couple weeks. You'll see, you know, like, you'll see the difference. When you are starving, the fat of what it needs to live, it doesn't live anymore. <laughs> it's now dead and it will go away because it has nothing to hold on to. It has nothing to live in. So make sure you guys pay attention. And I'm trying to be in a realistic way. I'm not saying, hey, don't have these things. I'm saying be mindful that these are the direct contributors to the problems of majority. I want to say over 90% of our tummy troubles. These are what the diabetes are coming from. This is what the Graves disease are coming from, the Crohn's disease. And it's just like, oh man, I can't, you know, I don't, I just want to live. Yeah, but it doesn't have to hurt. It really does not have to hurt. It's not supposed to be painful. You know, our stomach isn't supposed to cramp after we eat. And if it does cramp, we have to say, hold on, wait a minute. What was in here? I know that I'm at a space now. If I went out to eat and I know that there was MSG and MSG is another word of a salt chemical, I know if I have that immediately, it's like, wait a minute, hold on. This uh -uh. one, it tastes way too good. So if it tastes this good, it's like, no, nah, this is a setup. Ain't no green bean supposed to taste this good. What is this? It's an addictive quality. That's what MSG is. That's why the Chinese food at the cheap little takeout place is so delicious. It is so delicious because it's like, yo, all that was was a spring roll and some beef and broccoli. Nope. It was chemicals sprinkled all over it in order to keep you coming back. And once you're chemically ridden over or your systems are completely ridden over, then you're going to keep coming back or your body's going to say, hey, 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 we're hungry again. We're hungry again. We're hungry again. Or Sabrina's just like, yo, Sabrina's the stomach is just like, so um, I'm hungry, so I need another break. Yes, I understand. I just took my break 15 minutes ago, but now I need to go ahead and get me something to eat. Or that's when you find yourself at the vending machine. And it's just like, oh, no, I came here and I'm completely making bad decisions. I was not supposed to be over here. I was not supposed to be doing that. All because, boom, all of these contributors right here. So people want to say, hey, I've tried everything. Have you? Have you really? Let's be honest. Have you given up the wheat? Have you given up the soy? Have you given up the corn, the sugar, the potatoes, the rice? Understanding how all of that stuff really works hand in hand together. You know, bread, unless it's frozen, you know, like not Pillsbury in a can. Ezekiel bread is good for you. There's still other ways to actually do things that does is not as harmful as our choices that we're actually, you know, these convenient choices. Let's put it like that. The convenient choices. That's not what we want. We actually want things for the betterment of the whole. So you have your black rice, you have your wild rice, you know, like we have to do a serious detox from this pasta. When you have ever done a real detox, you realize like, oh my goodness, the first three days is like going through rehab. Really understand like, why am I shaking? Why am I sweating? What is going on? Then you're starting to have an emotional reaction. It's the same way. If you only ate lettuce and carrots and cucumbers and things like that, you're going to go through a detox if you don't get those things, but it's not going to feel like you're coming off of heroin. And mind you, I don't know what heroin feels like. I'm not trying to. I'm just trying to give you something relatable, something we've all seen in a movie. Um, so really understanding how that stuff truly works. So go and watch the movie Fed Up. It is available on Netflix. I'm pretty sure they have it on YouTube. Pour up, drink up. Drink up, drink up, drink up. Really getting to a space. Grapefruit juice. Grapefruit juice is a number one fat burner. I want to credit grapefruits solely for giving me abs. 
that and working out, of course. You definitely can't get abs without any action. Let me let me be realistic here. You're not just going to say, oh, yeah, y'all, Tierra told me that all I had to do was gre drink grapefruit juice and I was going to get me some abs. No, ma'am. That's not how that works. No, sir. That is definitely not how that works. So you have to, if you want abs, like if you want real abs, you have to put action behind that. That is the trigger within that on top of these other things. So grapefruit juice and 100%, not ocean spray, not Indian summer, not any of the commercial brands that we actually see. You have to get real grapefruit juice that is not pasteurized. Pasteurized means that everything is killed. Basically, that fruit went through a microwave. So all the beautiful electrical enzymes and all of that stuff, it's no longer living. Now it just tastes good. So now what does it turn into when everything's dead? It just turns into sugar because there is no energetic force or frequency behind it. So get you some grapefruit juice. I guarantee if you overdose on grapefruit juice, whether you work out or not, you're definitely going to see certain things to navigate just where the fat or the skin or the the stretch marks or you know the the all of that stuff it's going to go away not to mention grapefruits look like the sun i cannot express this more and i know i'm this is one of those things that has definitely been a complete contributor because that grapefruit juice boosts your metabolism it gives you all the vitamin c level it helps Basically, with any type of healthy skin, a lot of my returning webinar people, they understand the sensational skin. The grapefruit juice is a correlation to that. Does it taste good? No. But does fat feel good? No. You know, like, so really understanding drinking helps to eliminate all of these toxins. So any of these beverages, and that is the grapefruit juice that um, helps with your heart disease and fights off cancer. It's, like, it's just one of those boosters that helps everything else. So when you're drinking, especially, I always say aim for one gallon of water a day. One gallon of water, I cannot say it. Our bodies are 90% liquid. This liquid matters a whole bunch. Infuse it however you want. I always say aim for one gallon of water a day and you can't really lose. Will you win all the time? No, but is that your goal? Yes, that is what you're trying to do on a regular basis. So go ahead and just keep that flowing. Not to mention this water situation definitely helps flush out everything else. That's just like you having this beautiful building and never let the, the windows open to even air it out. It starts to get funky and everything starts to build up and you can't move things around in the in the mail rooms all stuffy and you know sage the small intestine is just like yo I don't even want to be here anymore. She's sitting around like yo I just much rather just go and just can I just take off today because it's just real stuffy in here. There's no flow. Water is the flow of everything else. Not to mention water flushes out the fat. Water flushes out the toxins. Water flushes out everything. Water is that natural laxative. Water definitely will help make you poop. You know, like in, you can't get a flat tummy if nothing is being digested. So being able to digest any of your foods any of whatever it is that you put in there. You don't just want to feed yourself just to feed yourself. You really want to feed yourself to be able to digest anything that you put in there and want everything to be at its maximum absorbency. Lastly, we have ginger tea. If you have some ginger tea with some limes in there or some lemons in there or anything citrusy, or maybe you can just have the ginger tea, chamomile, whatever it is that you want, that is also a natural um, metabolism booster. When you inject your cells with ginger, oh my goodness, think about things in this way. Anytime something sizzles or tingles down your throat or on your tongue or your esophagus or whatever that tingly feeling is, that spicy, whether it's cayenne pepper or ginger or wasabi or something like that, it does the same thing on the inside. So I like the tingly things. I love, 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 love spicy food. So I think that works in my best interest. So whenever I do have celebration cake, that ginger or the cayenne pepper or the grapefruit or the wasabi, it just chiseled everything away. So even if there was something in there that thought that it was about to hang out, 
that ginger's like, so um, yeah, you got to move on out now. You got to move on down the road. You got to get on up out of here, you know, and then here comes the water that's just like, oh yeah. So even, you know, if the ginger didn't sweep it away, here comes the water that just flushes it away. So nothing can actually survive on the back of my thighs. We're not having it. My body is not set up that way. My building is just like, yo, no, we are a luxury community. This is awesome. We have ballet. We have ballet and a concierge and a janitor and all sorts of stuff. Their president is about to be on its way. So we don't have time for this. You have to move on, you know, get on up out the way. Understanding how that stuff really, really, really works just hand in hand. Understanding how to improve your circulation. Why is your blood coming through and it's not working? Like it has to be able to have access to get to the stuff. So blood is just like, yo, so we're going to come through and we're going to always just be infinitely flowing all the time. And we have to get to our spots and so on and so forth. And then once we get there, we're going to have to move somewhere else. When you are eating things are digesting things with inflammation that's blocking it or stress that's blocking it or any type of pain or circulation issues that are blocking it, it can't do what it needs to do. You have to move that stuff out of the way. And these are just simple ways of system overloading. Here is some assistance. Now, you know, I know that it's not realistic to say, hey, you guys, stop eating bread and pasta and chili and all of this stuff and tacos. And no, that's not realistic. I am not that person. I don't not eat all of those things. I definitely do it in a different way, in a way more healthier way, but really understanding how to get just some assistance sometimes. So really getting to that space where you can do the same exact thing. And you can't flush your toilet without liquid. Think about it. You can't flush a toilet without liquid. Your body's the same way. So understanding, here is some assistance. Say you did have some pasta that day. Go ahead and pop you a couple little cayenne pepper peels. We're going to go ahead and burn this up out of here now. You know, here is my disclaimer. Your boo-boo may definitely be on fire because you just, you know, took in 40,000 units of cayenne pepper. But Everything else was already upset because you just put, you just digested all of this inflammation. And <laughs> it's just like that sometimes. And sometimes we just get lost in a plate of Alfredo broccoli pasta. And we just, that's just what we needed. And that's the decision that we decided to make that day. And it helped make that day better and that moment better. And this is exactly what I needed. But we're going to go ahead and flush that out. Understanding the papaya enzymes. These are one of the little hidden gems that I definitely found in all of these products. I definitely say you can go ahead and try to find them locally or you can always just go ahead and click on Amazon. Amazon has everything and it delivers everything to your doorstep. So I definitely recommend everybody just going on Amazon and making your life 10 times easier to be able to find these things because I can't give you direct stores or anything like that to actually find them because um, they're kind of hard to find. These um, chewable papaya enzymes. These things are what you take um, before meals or your after meals. These just definitely help regulate and break things down a lot better when it comes down to your digestion track or, you know, sometimes you just don't want to get bloated. You want to make sure that everything is broken down the way that it needs to be broken down. If you guys actually need an extra help when it comes down to constipation or, you know, um, just any type of bloating, I definitely recommend going ahead and just getting you some papaya enzymes and just having them on reserve at all times. You don't want to wait till you get to the discomfort space. You kind of want everything to be preventative care. The super, the super slimming tea. Now, for these are for the people who, you know, just kind of want to drink something. This is something that I take when I know, like, oh, my gosh, I just came back from being with the family and nobody has their best interest at heart. And I don't feel guilty. You know, like we have to leave the guilt behind. We're not going to feel guilty behind the choices that we make when we're celebrating. I'm not that person that's going to be at the barbecue like, oh, no, girl, I ain't doing that. I ain't that. Of course, you know, I'm going to bring my own dishes and I definitely don't want to partake in, you know, the ribs or the dead animals on my plate. But God bless you for doing so. I am going to bring my own things and here's my thing so I can be here and celebrate and be social as well. And everybody thinks that I'm a normal human being in that same aspect, in that same aspect. But I'm also going to flush this stuff out after I'm done with it tonight. This super slimming tea is really, 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 really great. Now, none of these products are meant for you to get dependent on. 
They're not shortcuts. They're just little helpers. They're helpers to come in and say, okay, you know, like they're little, your little private contractors. It's just like, yo, so I see, you know, you got this business situation going on over here and I got this nice little system that might be able to help you. This is just a, you know, one day thing. We're just going to go ahead and implement this and you might need me again sometime. So anytime you need me again, I'm over here, you know, over in this cabinet. I'm not too far away. That's what these things are. I definitely say go ahead and incorporate two of these super slimming teas at a time and do two right before bed. Do two right before bed. It's just like, oh, I had a long day and we did a lot today. I know it's about to be tailgate season. I know people are about to be out and about and doing horrible things. It's fine that it goes in there. Let's just make sure it gets out it has a way out and we're going to actually force it and give it some extra force in order to make sure it gets out that super slimming tea do two of those at one time don't add nothing else to it because you already did enough that day so this is not for the taste this is not for the luxury this is just for routine maintenance so let's go ahead and do two tea bags of that steep it in a little eight to four ounce cup coffee cup and drink that on down and um yeah let's talk about that in the morning <laughs> your aloe the aloe 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 is really really good just diuretic it definitely helps hold on to everything now when you guys are actually purchasing and this isn't just going towards um my carnivores or my vegans or vegetarians this isn't anything you just definitely want to stay away from gelatin coated capsules because gelatin that is grinded up um, animal parts. So you definitely wanna stay away from gelatin caps. Always look for veggie caps and it will say it on there. You know, like it will definitely say it on there. Um, so aloe, aloe is a natural healer. It's also cooling and it's soothing and it helps your body break everything down and it kind of coats everything the same way that if you were burnt and you had an open cut or open sore and you get you a piece of the aloe plant and just kind of rub the sap on there and immediately it creates a nice little coating and a barrier and it's able to heal in beautiful, beautiful ways. Aloe is one of those main contributors to that. This is a peel form, but I recommend if you actually see some some live aloe you can actually juice that you can um do so many other things you can make it into a juice you they actually have aloe juice i recommend trying it and once again it's not for the taste it's for the medicinal properties and the intention of what it does so these 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 crops and these plants they are actual medicine you know like they definitely are medicine now for those who are looking for that real deep 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 cleanse clean that detox I recommend looking into the CKLS Detox. This one is by this specific brand, this specific formula. This is called your colon, your kidney, your liver, and your spleen. This has been one of the most intense detoxes that I have ever done and participated in my entire life. It gets everything. It's like taking all of your organs, like a martini shaker, shaking them up, and then just throwing everything out. Now, if you don't have time off work, <laughs> I do not recommend doing this. I definitely recommend taking some time because you're gonna go boo-boo. You're gonna go boo-boo a whole lot. You, you don't even know how much you can boo-boo until you do stuff like this. We have no idea what is in the inside of us. There is all sorts of different things. Our small intestine, if it's ironed out, it is the size of a football field. Like how long is that? Like how much stuff just goes in there? We probably got old crayons that we didn't try to chew up from third grade that's just floating on through there. You know, like there's so many things that just get trapped inside our bodies and we have no idea. So once again, our bodies are our buildings so really seeing like oh my gosh what happens if you never even gave any maintenance or any attention to the basement or you never ever been on a third floor with all the different doors and the compartments it's the same exact way so thinking about it in that same way I definitely recommend if you guys just want a really really good just total body detox CKLS is definitely one thing that I recommend. It has been amazing for me. Um, and a lot, I've definitely recommended to a lot of other people as well. And they have the great results. Some people just kind of take, you know, a few of the capsules and it's a whole system, you know, definitely look it up, but it's a whole system. But some people just take a few a week just for general maintenance. So really understanding how that stuff all works together hand in hand. Here's some more probiotics. 
I'm pretty sure you guys heard this word. This is the number one probiotic that I definitely recommend. It's kind of pricey at times, but it's really, 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 really good. And it works very, very great for a lot of different things. Um, it is one of those that needs to be refrigerated because probiotics are live cultures. And I definitely, understand, I definitely recommend if you guys have never really intensely looked into what probiotics are or what they do or their intentions or anything like that, I definitely recommend going ahead and looking up just the effects of what probiotics do. But probiotics is something that you definitely need in your body on a regular, regular basis. It just definitely helps align all of our gut flora and all of our great bacteria that our bodies need, especially if we're poisoning ourselves on a regular basis. Are we intentionally poisoning ourselves? No, but the FDA approved it, so it can't be too bad. But think about it, everything that's approved by the FDA or everything that was recalled by the FDA was once approved by the FDA. So understanding what the FDA truly is, the FDA is the Food and Drug Administration. So the food and drugs work together. So now the food is the drugs and the drugs is the food. We are addicted on purpose. We are addicted for a reason. Sauerkraut is another really, really great probiotic. It's not the best smelling ever. It smells like, you know, if you open up a can of sauerkraut, just like, oh, cabbage is going to smell like a fart because that's all that it is. It makes your house and your area smell really, really bad. It smells really gassy and it's just like, oh, gosh, what is that smell? But ideally, what it actually does in the benefits of what sauerkraut truly does, it is one of the best natural um, probiotics that you possibly can have. And you definitely want things in a raw form. Another form of sauerkraut is kimchi. So a lot of you'll find kimchi in a lot of different Asian dishes. You'll find that, um, yeah, usually in a lot of different Asian dishes. So I definitely say go ahead and just start trying out sauerkraut. A lot of people put it on their um on their hot dogs or whatever it is that you use it with. I, I found one that I actually like kind of raw, but it's kind of hard to find. Um, but once again, sauerkraut is a really, really, really great um, natural probiotic. Kombucha. Kombucha is once again, another really, really good probiotic. It goes down, it fights cancer, it helps with all sorts of your digestive system, it boosts energy. Anytime you eat something or, you know, kind of just go in between the balance of, hey, I had some chips, let me go ahead and have a kombucha to flip all of that out and push all of that out. It boosts your energy, it detoxifies, it definitely helps with circulation and getting, aiding in weight loss. So it also burns the fat. All three of these are natural, natural fat burners. So you will not have tummy troubles when you're targeting, you know, what's really going on on the inside. And at the end of the day, it's all because of inflammation. Something in there is rewiring us to just go haywire. It's going bonkers. We don't know what's going on, what's actually happening. So really understanding all how all of these systems work, how the constipation, you can't be constipated when you have everything that is inside of you that's moving it out. You know, like you can't be constipated. It doesn't work that way. It may take time, just like us getting to the space to where we have bellies. That took time. That was not an overnight thing. You didn't just wake up one day like, oh my goodness, like I am, you know, in a, I'm two sizes bigger than what I was. That didn't happen overnight. So once again, having those unrealistic expectations on our body, let's give it time. Let's really put intentional energy behind combating these problems and getting to a space of just wealth, health, and just happiness. Superfoods that save the day. I am huge, 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 huge on superfoods. I love, love, love superfoods just because you get so little and they do so much. So I love my refrigerator to always look like a little baby fern gully at all times. It is all sorts of green things that look like it is just growing and just fruitful. I want my refrigerator to look like that all the time. Chia seeds. Chia seeds are a nice little shortcut. I believe that superfoods are the shortcuts to everything else. If you're having a juice, let's go ahead and enhance this 50 times more. Let's throw some chia seeds in there. Don't let them sit because they expand and they get slimy. And then that's just not, it's just not, um, <laughs> it's not a delectable thing. But if you put it in there really quick, also chia seeds are a complete protein and they are carriers of major, major, major 
omegas. So I definitely say incorporate the chia seeds on a regular basis because chia seeds, they do amazing things. Also, Google the benefits of chia seeds. Click on images. You'll see all sorts of stuff and all sorts of just great informational things that chia seeds do on a regular basis. Not to mention, we are back to that dandelion, that nettle. We're back to the turmeric. Here goes some tea again. I think that all of these things are in great harmony when it comes down to just different superfoods and how we can truly use them to incorporate on a regular basis. When you're flooding your body with the things that it wants and it needs, all that other stuff cannot live in there. So if you don't want fat to live in there, you have to push it out. You have to flush it out. You have to get it out of there. Not only just you, because sometimes we're not strong enough. We need the assistance. I feel that the superfoods are the assistance to be able to come in. We can't do it all. We need help a lot of the times. So really understanding what that is. Here are some amazing books that I definitely recommend just to expand your knowledge within the comprehension of everything that I'm talking about today. So The Wheat Belly, that is such a good book. I have the audio book that I listen to just to really be able to sometimes you just kind of got to hear things in your in your ears just for it to really settle in. It's just like, yeah, I know bread isn't bad for me, but I thought wheat was better. No, 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 no. Really understanding the politics behind these things. And Gluten Is My Bitch. That is a hilarious book. I offered that just for absolute comic relief. It is hilarious. One of the main contributors to a lot of the problems we're having when it comes down to weight loss and once again, inflammation, it's because of the fact gluten is in so many different things, but we don't understand what gluten truly is. So we think that we're getting pasta and it's gluten-free pasta. So we think that that's supposed to work for us. No, 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 no. You know, like gluten ideally is glue. Stop, look at the word, G-L-U. Glue, it's glue, it's going to stick. That's what glue does. <laughs> so the entire purpose of what gluten is and why it's there, really understanding why we're having so many different allergies. You're not allergic to you know, all of these different things. It's the fact that there's gluten in it and your body is like, yo, so I don't know what to do with this glue. What, why is there glue in here? So yes, here's a rash, here is some mucus. Here is an allergy. Here is some bloating. Here's, you know, the Hershey squirts. I'm going to go ahead and give you some runs and hopefully you'll learn your lesson and not put this in here anymore because we don't know what to do with it. So we're just going to get it out. You know, like, so your entire department, everybody's in there calling off, you know, Leo the liver, Sabrina the stomach, Priscilla the pancreas. Everybody's just like, yo, I didn't sign up for this. I don't know what this is. You got me up in here and I don't know what we supposed to be doing today. And I don't know what, no, I did not sign up for this today. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off. Larry the large intestine is sitting around like, so um, I'm gonna just go out on a cigarette break. Your large intestine can't take off. You know, the mail room cannot take off. It's like, how are we supposed to communicate? How is it? And then Sophia is in there cussing up a storm because she's just like, I don't understand what is happening today. And I did not come here for this. I do not know this. I have a degree. I have a degree in the tech department of what from Georgia Tech. I have a degree and I know all of this technical stuff. I don't know where the mail is supposed to go. I don't know where the messages are. Supposed to go. Where is the mail room? I don't even know those things. That's what Sophia is saying. And then esophagus Eddie is sitting around like, hey, you know, like he's the concierge. So he's just like, so um, I don't know what to explain to you people today because everybody, everybody is going to just completely, completely cut off and really um, break all of that stuff down. So Eddie, the concierge is like, I just do not know what this is. Thomas, the tongue is just like, so I'm just driving a Maserati today and I'm gonna just coast around, you know, like, and really see what this stuff is just doing today because I just don't, and I don't want to, and I have no idea of how to do any of these things. So here are great reference books that I definitely say, everybody go ahead and um, read and look into and, really get to that space of understanding for yourself. I can only say and teach so much. There's certain things that you kind of have to do on your own and nothing truly works but work. So what do you want? I ask you now, this is not a time to make excuses. This is a time to truly make results. So really understanding how 
the results work. Nothing works but work. You can have the, bur the burger or you can have the broccoli. They're going to fight. They're going to fight for space and somebody's going to ideally win. They're going to come head to head. If you have more broccoli on your team, then you do burgers on your team. So the broccoli is going to override the burger anytime they come up through there or vice versa. If you have more burgers in there, the burgers are going to override the broccoli. It's just like, oh, yeah, this is cute. This is funny. This looks like a little tree. Oh, OK, you got to go. And it's going to push it completely out. And it's going to be systems override and all things quarter cheeseburgers. So really understanding what that part is. So you have to ask yourself, one, you have to be accountable and you have to be honest with what you are doing and why you are doing it. Are we just going to sit around and continue to complain? So are we going to revisit this time next year and still look and feel exactly the same? Today, you invested in yourself. You invested in another way. You invested in trying to figure out another navigation system. You allowed me to come into this space to teach you or show you or give you different tips, tools, guidelines in order for you to get to a better space of yourself. So really getting that sort of understanding of, OK, what is it that you truly want? I can't want it for you. I can't do it for you. Nothing works but work. This is an acid and alkaline balancing food chart. So just about everything on here tells you what acid foods are. This is what you should be staying away from. If you go ahead and um, Google the alkaline food chart, you'll see the opposite side of it to where you can have things on here, but just from time to time. You can see what that things are contributing to a lot of the problems. It's all about balance. I believe you're able to have whatever you want. But when you learn the balance, that is where everything really comes into play. And we are in disharmony. We are bloated. We are constipated. We have all of this skin. We have these ulcers. We have this stress. The stress, which is stressing out our internal organs, our businesses and our bodies are crashing and we ain't supposed to be going bankrupt. You know, like we're not supposed to be having layoffs. We're not about to have these things inside of this beautiful, beautiful building that we inherited. So really coming to get to that space. No, have what you want. Just understand how to override it. So this is the part where I definitely want to say I thank you for understanding, you know, the main thing is choose. I am doing this over, I know this. So it's not until you change your identity to match your life blueprint that you will understand why everything in the past never worked. So coming into the question and answer segment. So here is one that says, the aloe juice that I bought has been loaded with sugar. Is there any way around it? I feel the only way around that is to honestly make your own. Go and purchase you a slice of aloe. It's usually you can get a really big one for like a dollar and some change and make it yourself. Definitely make it yourself. You can put it in a blender. You can put it with some more juice. Don't juice the whole thing. You got to skin the or take the skin off. But you definitely can do that. Can a 13-year-old take CKLS? I do not recommend that. <laughs> I definitely say you can find a couple more herbal tinctures that um, may be a little bit better um, for their digestive system. But ideally, I wouldn't recommend CKLS for a non-adult. I just don't know how, um, how abrasive it is to their, to their actual streams. Another question is, what are your thoughts on MAG-7? It's a combination of MAG... I don't know what that is, honestly. MAG-7, I'm so sorry. I do not... I don't have any information or any knowledge. I've never even heard that word before until right now in this moment. But that gives me something great to go ahead and research. He says, is jasmine, tea, is jasmine rice good? I definitely recommend just pretty much trying to stay away from anything white in that aspect because of the fact of we honestly do not know. Um, I don't want anything that's able to not move out. And when you think about how things go inside of you, like if it's harder to scrape off of the pan or harder to scrape off of the plate, that's what it does on the inside of you. So it's the same exact way. So jasmine rice, I wouldn't recommend. And it definitely metabolizes in your body as sugar. So I want to definitely stay away 
from jasmine rice. Can you use a sub sugar substitute to sweeten to sweeten whole grapefruit? Personally, I wouldn't, but you can sprinkle some honey on there if that makes, you know, you if that makes it a lot more palatable. Um, sugar substitutes, I definitely say stay away from the Splenda and all of the chemical Latin stuff, all of the little fluorescent packets. I definitely recommend staying away from those um, added sweeteners because those are nothing just added chemicals. Are there beans acid forming to the body? I honestly do not know. I kind of stay away from um, the acid forming things, but if there was acid forming beans for the body, I would say that it would be anything that's already cooked and canned. So anytime you want your beans or anything like that, you definitely want to make sure it is the freshest humanly possible. So I definitely say go ahead and soak them, go and buy you a bag of beans, have them sitting in a nice cabinet and you are good to go. But if they're already pre-made or anything like that, I know black beans are one of the most healthiest beans that you possibly can eat. It's a complete full, full, full protein. So really being able to understanding um, how there are different um, acidifying beans and they say that um, soy beans are definitely a acid bean, white beans, um, pinto beans, but all of that stuff are really, really different ways. So I just say, you know, go up and down and see what actually works for you. And it's all about balance at all times. How do you flush alcohol from your system? Um, dandelion juice is a really, really good. So dandelion juice and anything citrus. So I would usually do a, a, a lot of dandelion juice, like, at least a two bundles of dandelion juice, throw some lemon in there. You can definitely throw some lime in there. You definitely can do that just the day after because you want to be able to rejuvenate those cells. So that's what you depleted. So getting that stuff back. Also, activated charcoal. Activated charcoal is really, really good to absorb any sort of toxin that is in your body, but it's really good at um, balancing and absorbing the toxins from alcohol. Spelt as a substitute or tr for traditional yeast, yes or no? Yes. Spelt, you definitely want to go towards. Yes, 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 yes. I have Graves and hyperthyroid. Can going can going can going vegan help me lose weight? I've had a problem since being diagnosed. Yes, I definitely believe that anything plant-based, anything gearing away from the standard American diet can definitely help you get to a healthier space with inside of your cells because if you're targeting your cells and you're targeting, you know, your your blood flow and you're targeting certain things like I said with an entire building, it all runs off of each other. So if one system is going down, it definitely can help navigate the other systems. So Graves disease, that's a lot of um, inflammation. You know, like it's an inflammation type um, of disease when it comes down to understanding what that is also with your hyperthyroidism as well. Anything plant-based because, you know, plant-based, I mean, plants don't do anything except for promote health. They only promote energy. So anything going towards that will definitely just be a step in a more positive direction. Is a lentil and quinoa pasta okay to eat? I say yes. I, I believe everything is all about good, better, and best. So you have good things, and then you have the better, and then you have the best. So when you're thinking about things, especially processed things on that sort of spectrum, go always go for the best. You always want a quinoa pasta. You always want a lentil pasta. I know they have black bean pastas. They have all sorts of different things. It's not the fact of, oh, my gosh, I have to give up pasta for the rest of my life. No, 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 no. We're just going to go in a better direction than what we have been doing. We're going to be a little bit more mindful and intentional. We can actually go to different farmers markets or markets that actually have real good pastas that are handmade, you know, without the gluten and without those things in it. So I don't say, no, you can't eat pasta 
for the rest of your life. No, that's unrealistic. I just definitely say do it with a better awareness and better intention behind it. And lentil and quinoa pasta are great, 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 great substitutes. I definitely recommend. My next question is do grits or pimenta have gluten? Um, yes, they are corn. So depending upon what they are, if they say, you know, organic grits or if it's a local corn company, I definitely say you can try those. But um, yeah, grits and pimenta, that's nothing but grinded up corn, ideally. So it's a GMO as well. So it's genetically modified. Is spelt bread a good alternative? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Spelt is an amazing alternative. Spelt is also a really, really great flour if you needed a flour as well. Next question is, is buckwheat okay to eat since it's a grain? It's ideally wheat. And understanding, or if you actually go and um, invest in purchasing the book Wheat Belly, you will see and hear and learn that all of the wheats ideally here in the U.S. have been altered in some way, shape, or form. But as I stated before, it is about good, better, and best. Next question is, what can I do for suffering for gallstones? I'm suffering from them. I definitely recommend when you're trying to target your gallstones, your gallstones, your, your gallbladder is pretty much like the HR department. So you kind of got to go and work with the accounts receivable department. So you got to focus on your liver, you know, like, so focus on your liver because that's kind of the spillage of everything else. You know, that gallbladder, it's, it's, shooting out all sorts of different toxins. So where the toxins come from, it only came from the liver. So if you focus ideally and do a really good cleanse on the liver or really target your blood or how that stuff really works, I'm pretty sure you will get to a better space of just health and awareness because, you know, gallstones, it's not an easy thing. They didn't develop quick or easy either. So it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of intention behind um, getting them back to function on its maximum efficiency. Last question is, how do you feel about raw sugars, like coconut sugars or palm sugars? This goes back to the space where I say it's all about good, better, and best. I definitely believe in the raw sugars or coconut sugar. I would be unrealistic if I said, hey, I don't eat any sugar. That is not real. That is not true. I'm actually addicted to it. I can just do it in a better version, just like coconut sugar or palm sugar. Do I have those things in my house? I do. I have a um, palm sugar if I need something to sweeten it up or if I'm having a warm beverage. You know, sometimes honey just is not getting it. Sometimes if you make your oatmeal or you just want a particular taste, a lot of times these other added additives or sweeteners just do not get it the way that you need it to get got. So ideally, I am all for coconut sugar and palm sugar. So really, my final tip is the chronic constipation or any type of anything chronic that you are dealing with on a regular basis. I was that person who was a vegan, who only ate nothing but fruits and vegetables and still was bloated, still was fat, still was constipated, only pooped twice a week, if even that, you know, really a dark circles, kidneys failing, all sorts of things. I did not understand how to really get to that space of just life navigation. Like, what is this? So I'm telling you all, that when you have to reset your system, you really have to do it. It is very, very intentional work. You know, like, and you really have to reset your system from the inside out. Detoxing from the foods, detoxing from the conversations, detoxing from the friends, detoxing from the family, detoxing from the toxic space of emotions that we like to carry and store things in. I definitely say that that process is going to take well over 21 days, if not more. It's going to take a lot of intention. It's going to take a lot of time. And you have to, have to, have to, have to do it. It is one thing for you to put that time and that energy into yourself. Otherwise, that time and that energy will be taken away from you. And it definitely is not going to feel good or 
you don't want it to be that way or, you know, it's it's definitely not that cost effective either. You know, hospital bills are astronomical, co-pays, time off work, all sorts of things when we're just trying to get to a space to where we're just understanding our healthier selves. So really getting to understand how we can combat these things. I definitely want to thank everybody for being here today. I definitely want to thank everybody for signing up for this Tackling Tummy Troubles. I definitely help, hope I helped. I helped in every area just to, for you to get to a space to where you understand how things work, you understand what to do, you understand the different roles and the responsibility and how they all come together and play together in order to make the sum whole look the way that it looks, feel the way that it looks, and basically run the way that it runs. If you don't understand those things, there can't be any balance. There can't be any harmony. There isn't any focus. So I definitely want to offer anything after concluding this webinar. If anybody has any questions or if anybody wanted to go a lot more in depth with me, my services that I offer is the Tierra Go Screen 30 Day Lifestyle Program. We walk, we work one on one together. We come together with the entire Tierra Go Screen community because it's a whole community of people who are just trying to get better. And we're all walking and striding at different spaces and different paces with inside of our lives. If that is too much at the time being, go ahead and schedule a talk with Tierra. My talks with Tierra are timed. You either have 30 minutes or you have 60 minutes. It's one on one, undivided, clear cut. Hey, T, I got this going on and I need to understand. We talk about that specific problem or issue or whatever it is within that allotted time frame. So you guys are more than welcome to participate in any future up and coming webinars. I definitely thank you for your time, for your energy, for your space, and for being here with me today. Thank you so much.